All right, but let's start the program by shining the light on a tiny but a mighty threat that's hiding in plain sight. Microplastics, the tiny plastic particles that are smaller than 5 mm, are everywhere in water, in food, even in our bodies. And just to give you a reference of how small 5 mm actually is, just look at your fingernails. Most fingernails are actually between the thickness of 5 to 10 mm. That's how tiny these microplastics are. From the moment we wake up, brush our teeth with a toothpaste that contains microbeads, to the moment we go to bed and snuggle into our pajamas, sometimes polyester as well. We are exposed to these tiny toxins. But what exactly are microplastics and how are they affecting us? Are they just a minor nuisance or a major health risk? And what can we do to reduce our exposure and protect our planet and our bodies? We'll explore the science behind the microplastics, the risks they pose to our health and the environment and the solutions that we can help to mitigate the impact. Now joining us on the broadcast now is the Dr. Ashwin Gopinath. He's the founder biostate.ai and a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States. Dr. Ashwin, thanks so much for joining us early this morning. Uh, I have to first start by understanding this. You know, in India, the headlines have been all about microplastics that it's entered breast milk, that it's entered fetuses, it's entered our gut, our lungs, our liver. But we don't really understand the extent of the impact so can you begin by perhaps explaining to us what exactly microplastics are if you had to explain it to say a 5 year old how would you how would you do that microplastics would be basically just small pieces of plastics the same kind of plastics that you use for you know making the bottles or plastics that you use for plastic covers in which you carry your vegetables and things like that it's just small pieces of it technically what they say is it's smaller than 5 mm but it can be anything smaller than 5 mm so think of it as the almost the size of a hair the width of a hair or smaller mm. of any plastic and it basically exists you know when you when when plastic degrades with because of you know friction or you know it is you know heated up or you know there is light falling on it it just basically just breaks down and it just basically leaches into pretty much everything else so whether it is you know in a bottle of water there'll be small pieces of it in there these are microscopic these can be anything smaller than you know a size you can think of it as size of a you know width of a hair yeah so almost uh, difficult to spot and almost difficult to stay out of but uh, then what happens when these microplastics penetrate our bodies say they penetrate lungs stomach and other organs as we keep reading about what are they doing to us the thing is microplastics has been sort of like observed in bodies only in the last i would say last decade or so I mean, people have started seeing this even before but but it's only really started coming to the forefront in the last decade or so last 5 10 years so there are different ways in which it can affect mm. it there are ways in which it can affect it by the size and then there are ways in which it can affect by the chemicals itself so if the, and and typically what happens is when you inhale it or when you ingest it or even when you touch it sometimes depending upon the size it can get get into your body so there are different bodies of research that basically says mm. the effect the chemical itself plastic itself depending upon the chemical itself it can have carcinogenic effect which means it can cause cancer that's just the plastic the chemicals in it mm. or it can cause things like hormonal deficiencies mm. hormonal imbalance but and depending upon the size one of the more mm. recent egregious you know kind of uh, scary uh, results has been uh, you they they have been shown that when you have uh plastic microplastics basically depositing itself in the carotid artery so the artery that basically connects to your brain uh they have increased mm. chance mm. of plaque formations on it so you end up having increased chances of stroke so it depends upon what part of the body and mm. what kind of plastic that basically gets uh, uh lodged at different places but needless to say you know it is mm. an issue i see I see interesting you saying that even the touch of a microplastic can cause harm that's uh, that has to be a worrying sign however having said that you know the WHO says that it has not recognized any clear 
uh, sort of connection between microplastics leading directly to cancer. Having said that, uh, very early days, like you said, only 5 to 10 years when we've sort of even begun track, sort of, uh, you know, tracking this phenomena. So what exactly is the human interface with microplastics? How are we getting in touch with all of this? So humans interface with microplastics in the sense that anytime you touch anything with plastics, there is a probability of some amount of microplastics leaching into it. So if you drink from a bottle of water, or Pepsi or any kind of Coke or any kind of drinks or if you have vegetables that you were carrying in a plastic bag or if you had like rice or any of the cereals or anything that was in a plastic bag, some amount of it will leach into it and you can't really remove it. There are ways to kind of filter water to a certain extent but you can't wash and filter everything that you put in your body. Also, when you touch, depending upon the size, like I said, microplastics is anything below, technically below five millimeters, but it can be extremely small, even few tens of nanometers, which can enter your body or enter your cells just by touching. So there are different ways. It can come in through inhalation, wow. touch, drink, uh, food, all of these methods. It can basically get into your body. Wow, sounds like almost impossible to sort of remove from our daily life and interface at all. But uh, let's let's hold on to that. I want to understand uh, your uh, sort of take on how microplastics have entered even breast milk and fetuses. That was a headline that really caught everybody's attention. It's the same way that gets into it. It gets into the mother's body. And, you know, depending upon where it circulates, it basically can find itself in different places. Like, you know, there are papers that where, wherein yeah. there are instances wherein you have even found uh, microplastics being uh, present in the testes of males. And uh, um, that's a paper that came very recently. There is another place wherein microplastics have been found in brain. Microplastics have been found in different parts, different arteries, like I said. You know, when you have plaque formation, so essentially what gives you stroke, uh, microplastics are forms mm. uh, can be the seed at, uh, around which the strokes can actually start forming. So it has found itself in pretty much everywhere. Like, uh, like there's a good probability that if I take a small little tissue and look at it under the microscope, there would be some plastics, some amount of it that is formed. It is com because it's just a mm. symbol of... Uh, the ubiquity of how you are how how much plastic is being used and how long it takes for it to degrade uh, dr not a good sign at all and this is a worrying worrying one on top of that but tell us how do we then stop this from happening are you saying that you know plastic bans have been spoken about but then there is degradable plastic as well that is there in the market to be used and these days to be honest it's just not possible to go out go to the supermarket and to pick up something or just to go on with your day-to-day -day life without any interface with plastic so how do we stop this from happening so i mean the 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 ugly truth is one only the only real way in which we can actually get around this problem is to sort of move towards degradable plastics and things like that that's a systemic change the plastic that already exists around us that will take a long time for it to be filtered like um so if you were to reduce the use of mm. plastic materials or plastic bottles or you know plastic bags it will slowly start getting removed from the system but to a certain extent plastics exist everywhere uh so uh, uh mm. one sure shot way in which you can actually get around this problem is if you, at least from water if you were to stop uh, using plastic bottles to a great extent that will reduce uh, uh my plastics and microplastics entering your body filtering the water that you actually uh, drink through these kind of extremely tiny, uh, um, like 200 micron or like a few, uh, half of, uh, like 500 micron uh, filters uh, will help reduce it as well. But to a great extent, the only way in which you can completely remove it is to kind of move towards, you know, degradable plastics and, uh, you know, reducing plastic usage systemically across the board. Wow. That uh, that seems like 
a tough reality to sort of follow. But tell us, so one way is to avoid plastic as much as possible, plastic bottles to start with. All of us can just have a glass bottle perhaps along with us. But any other hygiene rules that people watching this right now and very worried with the reality of it can do in their own homes, in their own life? Definitely. I mean, hygiene rules, like to a certain extent, washing definitely helps, uh, especially washing with soap because plastics won't necessarily get removed by just uh, water because the way in which they interact, but soap definitely will remove if there are plastics, they're basically microplastics on, let's say, vegetables or whatever else that you are actually going to be eating. Uh, def uh, I mean, the other thing systemically that one can do for themselves is basically just stop using plastic uh, bottles for drinking water. That's the, or drinking uh, anything. Mm. Uh, I mean, if you just systemically start reducing that, that will go a long way. That will definitely go a long way. Right. right. In fact, uh, we were reading uh, that it's not just the plastic in the form that we know it. Even balloons sort of leave that speck and do not uh, sort of degrade. So there's a there are a lot of things all around us that we considered just okay, just about you know a couple of years ago, and now suddenly research throws up that all of them are damaging the environment. Which brings me to the last question: What are we going to do about this? Is this a problem we can solve, or are we just doomed on this one? No, no. So, so I don't want to be sort of doom and gloom all the way. I think there are, I think like systemically we are reducing the amount of plastics that we are using in general. And that's, uh, that's moving in the right direction. But it just takes time. Like we can't just, you know, we can't remove the remnants of this completely from uh, around us because uh, like I said, this can get into your body from a, a variety of different ways and we have plastics all around us. We are reducing, like as a society, we are reducing the amount of reliance on plastic, but we can't eliminate it. It'll be a while before we actually do that. So, yeah, unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but we can do our part. We can do our part by just, I mean, the easiest way, like I said, uh, uh, because most people's exposure to plastic with, uh, with, especially with food and things that they ingest comes from plastic bottles in which they have water and other uh, liquids. That itself, if you reduce, it will go a long way. All right. Uh, well, Dr. Ashwin, thank you so much for shedding light on the subject and also giving us a slight bit hope that it will take time, but perhaps the battle if we fight together, we can win against plastic.